Um, hello, everybody. So this is Hannibal Cobbs. Uh, I'm the fellow behind the GoFundMe site and who we have given money to and everything. Uh, and I'm filming this video because, um, so earlier today, I gave a talk about the project to um, the uh, Buddhist Studies Graduate Roundtable uh, at Berkeley University, where I'm a second year PhD student. And originally, I had intended to film that talk and send it to um, you folk who have given me money. But um, for some reason, the computer only filmed about 20 minutes of it, so I don't have the whole thing. And then I realized that actually it wasn't a very good film anyway, since you uh, couldn't see very clearly what I was showing um, or myself, so that I uh, would film a, another film for all of you folks. And um, so here is that talk, which I gave earlier today. Um, and you can watch the 20 minutes if you want to see that as well. Um, and I'm going to try to lay out what the project is and then what I think is the worth of this stuff that I've been collecting. Um, and I can, originally it was a talk that was given to a bunch of Buddhologists, uh, people who study Buddhism, so it has that sort of slant to it. Um, but I'll try to make it work for you folks as well. Um, so uh, th this project um, began uh, <clears throat> in 2013. Uh, so after I finished undergraduate, I my undergraduate education, I received a grant to uh, go do survey work in um, northern China um, focused on <clears throat> fortified villages. So um, I'll, I'll show a couple pictures just to tell a nice story. So um, most of this takes place in this uh, place called um, Yu County, Yuxian in Chinese, in, uh, which is located about um, five or six hours drive west of Beijing. And I was walking, this was in the winter of 2013, the first time I'd been there. Uh, and I was walking out to uh, one of the little villages there. Um, and it's um, kind of a desolate place. I mean, it's it's very dry, it's very poor. And you go in through this, um, all of the villages there are walled, as you can see. You go in through this busted up old gate. And you can see uh, the interior of the village is, is quite sort of desolate. Most of the people have left. It's, it's quite poverty stricken. And while I was walking around in there, I got... Um, met up with this, ambushed by this group of kids who uh, said, you know, hey, do you want to go see something cool in our village? And so I said, okay, sure, why not? And, and they took me um, back through the end of the village, and there's a little um, wall that goes through the northern wall of the village and into this strange little barbican space back there, which is walled all around. And, and inside there's this um, bunged up old temple, and, and you can't really see it, but the, the temple... Um, the wall on the left side of the temple had actually sort of fallen in. Um, so you could just walk right into it. And um, so this is a picture of what was inside that um, room. And you can see it's this um, actually beautiful thing. It's um, now filled with garbage and um, they use it to store coffins for some reason. I'm not really sure, but um, uh, two and a half of the five wall panels were covered in this um, absolutely spectacular murals um, which display um, the uh, what turned out to be I didn't know this at the time the the palace of the perfected warrior Jin Wu in Chinese who's a um, kind of a Taoist god uh, and you can see the kind of detail of this court scene where the the palace is depicted both as this opulent mansion but also as a sort of a walled fortress um, now, into which the supplicant has gone, and he's kneeling at the foot of the god. There's actually two gods you can see. I think they just wanted to get the maximum number of um, possible sort of uh, depictions in this isometric view. Anyways, it's it, it, at the time it struck me as sort of magical and beautiful, even that one could find something like this in this tiny little village. Um, and so this summer, uh, which was um, summer of uh, 2017, uh, I was back there for the first time seriously since I had left in 2014. I, uh, during that period, I spent about a year and a half there. And um, uh, I, I discovered, I went back to this temple, and, and here's a picture of the room as it stands now. So the entire panel, so this is the same panel that we were looking at earlier, and the entire panel uh, has been um, entirely cut off the wall. And uh, presumably sold somewhere um, by, by thieves. And, and here you can see, so this was the other side of the uh, of the room. Um, and one of the walls had half fallen in, the other one was still standing. 
uh, you can see this is the other palace which was on the opposite side of the room and the same beautiful scene where there's the perfected warrior surrounded by these beautiful palace ladies and generals and uh, that's still there uh, as of when I was there this summer but um, it's being rained on it's quite damaged now and um, the um, the rear wall which depicts the interior that the seraglio the harem of the uh, perfected warriors palace is um, has now just fallen and it's you know covered in dirt and lying there in the dust it's quite sad and I, I was startled to realize that when I was back there this summer that pr probably about um, a third of the, of the sites that I visited in 2013-2014 are now either um, destroyed or stolen or otherwise inaccessible. So just to show some pictures here, um, this is the Hayagriva, the, the god, the horse god. Um, and I, I sent a volunteer back up there this, this summer and um, you can see that, that thieves have kind of gridded it out um, to, to cut it, you know, cut it out to, to steal away. And I'm, I'm not sure why they stopped. Um, but I don't know, maybe they were doing it and somebody came along and they ran away, but this is the state it's in with these, this huge grid cut into it. It's quite destroyed. Um, other things, uh, even if it's not uh, intentionally destroyed, these, these things are often in just very structurally unstable buildings. So, um, one of the most important gods in this part of the world are the Nyangyangs, who are these, uh, Taoist goddesses. And I'm only aware of a couple, maybe, um, two or three intact iconographies for this god this god's left north of the Taihong range uh, in this region and and one of them's in this uh, building in a, in a village which is abandoned which has been abandoned and then the interior space of the fort was sold to a chicken farm um, so the whole place is covered in, in chicken coops and it's um, really unsanitary there's flies buzzing everywhere it's covered in feces this building is uh, as you can see structurally unsafe it's it's dangerous even to go in and, and this is the uh, mural which is inside of it um, which is I mean it, it's not the best mural I've ever seen but um, th there's not many of these things left actually and and here for instance uh, is the um, building which sits across from it which is the old Dragon King temple which existed in the village and which has now totally collapsed um, in lots of cases uh, when I was there in 2014 uh, 2013 to 2014 I I wasn't necessarily interested in, in frescoes at the time, um, although I, I liked them. And so uh, here is one temple where I went in, and the first time I was there in 2013, it's another Dragon King temple, and you can see this beautiful blue 19th century fresco of, um, or mural, I should say, of the Dragon Kings riding out, uh, dispensing rain across the land with their, you know, their mythological flunkies. And um, I went in there and I thought, wow, what a nice fresco, and I took some pictures. Um, uh, you know, just because I, I liked it, I thought it was kind of artsy, and then I, I went along my way, and um, when I was back there this time, the fresco was totally gone, and I didn't actually take that very detailed picture, so you can't see every figure, um, if there are extant cartouches writing on it, which will tell you, you know, the date or something, I don't have pictures of that. Um, I don't have a detailed pictures of the little figures under which display, display the human activities which are related to the cult of the god. Um, essentially, you know, if I had done my job right the first time, instead of just being like pretty pictures, um, I would, um, somebody, um, excuse me, but you know, it would exist in the world, a detailed record of what was once uh, in this temple instead of the thing has just been cut away by villagers sold and now is sitting in some coal baron's house and, you know, Datong or Beijing or something like that. Um, so things get stolen all the time. This room is now totally bare. There's nothing in it. Um, things just get um, sort of overzealously repaired. So um, this is another sort of um, maybe a little bit troublesome case where, so this temple um, uh, was for a long time, so I did a survey of about 400 villages. I would say that this was hands down the best preserved temple that existed. Um, it was, again, another Dragon King temple, it's the most common type of temple, the, and you had, it was wonderfully um, documented in these uh, boards which hung from the ceiling. So the, um, it was, the temple was founded in 1566. Uh, after that, it was um, repaired in 1709, and that's when the um, murals which are inside of it and are perfectly preserved um, and gorgeous, I'll, I'll show you them in a little while, that's when those were painted by a painter named Trey Wen Sin under uh, the pa patronage of uh, several local families from the village next door. Um, and, and it's 
and it essentially hasn't been touched in 300 years, and it's absolutely gorgeous thing sitting out there in the fields under this old pine tree. Um, and um, I guess the either the county or the village decided they wanted to preserve this thing, and the, so the solution was that they poured concrete in around it and basically encased that building in a, a concrete block um, and then put a, you know, a fence around it and a door and, and, and so, and then they put big statues along the altar inside so that you can't actually see these spectacular frescoes which are inside of it. So, um, which is, I'm okay with because it's protected and the frescoes are still there and it's being used for the original purpose, fine. But you also did just take this temple which had not been touched in 300 years and encased it in a concrete block, which is awful. Um, and that, that stuff happens uh, all the time. So I don't, um, uh, you know, th there's all kinds of problems with, you know, uh, white people going into China and trying to fool around with stuff. And, you know, foreigners, especially me, who uh, I'm just kind of a schmo, um, you know, trying to mess with other countries' cultural heritages. And, and for that reason, I, I don't have any power to um, change any of this. And I don't actually think I should have power to change any of this. Among other things, the local government is um, now, I think, realized the importance of a lot of this stuff, and they're working to preserve what they see as the important examples. And I don't always like the way they do that. I think the way they preserve things is often very destructive. I think they um, don't pick the examples that I would pick. They have different priorities. But essentially, it's not my decision to make. It's not my cultural heritage. But um, I do have a camera, um, and I do care about these things. I think they're beautiful, and, and I want to make them available to people. So. Um, I set out on this, you know, as I was looking last summer, or this summer, uh, at these pictures of all these places that had been destroyed, I, I, I sort of flew into a wild rage one day and thought, what am I doing sitting here, uh, you know, memorizing Sanskrit verb forms in Berkeley when I could be out there kind of taking pictures of this stuff, which is, you know, being plundered right before my eyes. Um, and so I threw up the um, GoFundMe page and... Uh, got permission from the university to take leave of absence for a year from December, which I'm going to do. That's when your money will be used, and, and here we are. Um, so <clears throat> with that as kind of a background, um, I'm going to give the, the meat of this lecture is actually um, just to talk about what, what's out there according to what I've already been able to connect and how I think, um, uh, you know, what exists, what should we make of it, what, what are different ways we can understand it, um, what is it worth, what does it do? So, uh, and it's divided this lecture because I was originally made this lecture for a group of Buddhologists who don't, you know, work on art studies or village history or anything like that. Um, it, it's divided somewhat arbitrarily into art and then Buddhist art, which I don't actually think is the proper category, but you'll get the point when you see it. Um, and uh, I um, hope you enjoy.